this section, we want to combine the two ideas that we learned in the previous sections, which are sigma and pi bonds, as well as um, hybridization. So in this case, we have a carbon double bonded to a carbon and bonded to two hydrogens. This is called ethene or ethylene sometimes. So in this case, this carbon has one, two, three domains. It has two hydrogens and one carbon. So it is sp2 hybridized. So it has 120 degree arrangement between hydrogen, carbon, and hydrogen here, or between hydrogen, carbon, and this other carbon. And it has sigma bonds with the hydrogens and one sigma bond with the other carbon. But you might have asked yourself, well, what happened to that other p orbital? If it's sp2 hybridized, that means there's an unhybridized p orbital. And that unhybridized p orbital is shown here in uh, red and blue. So this is the unhybridized p orbital on this carbon, and this carbon is the same, and this is the unhybridized p orbital on this carbon. Well, if you remember what a pi bond is, a pi bond occurs above and below the atom in these unhybridized p orbitals. So in ethylene, you have one sigma bond and one pi bond. And the pi bond occurs in unhybridized p orbitals. So this is sp2 hybridized. There's an unhybridized p orbital, which is forming your pi bond. Let's look at another example. This is um, ethine uh, or acetylene, like you would find in an acetylene torch. In this case, we have C triple bond C. So if we count the domains for this carbon, it's C, excuse me, H and C. So one domain, two domains. The other carbon is the same. So this is SP hybridized because it has two domains. Well, what's happening is we have an SP2 hybrid. That's the 180 degree one. And what we have here is a sigma bond on this side with hydrogen and a sigma bond as one of these bonds between this carbon and this carbon. So we have the two sigma bonds. Then we have two, in this case, unhybridized p orbitals because it's only sp hybridized. There's two other unhybridized p orbitals shown here in blue and red, just like before. So this time the pi bond not only occurs above and below the atom, but also inside of the page and outside of the page here. So these p orbitals inside and outside of the page also overlap with each other to form a second pi bond. So in a triple bond, we have one sigma and two pi bonds that are occurring. Another thing to notice is that if carbon is in this linear arrangement, if we were to look at the shape of this carbon to this hydrogen to this carbon, it would be linear because it has two domains. It is also sp hybridized. Because domains influence both the shape of the molecule, the electron geometry, as well as the hybridization, they have something in common. And in fact, in organic chemistry, someone might call this an sp hybridized carbon. They might say the reaction occurs at the sp hybridized carbons. And one is expected to know that that's where the triple bond is. Um, not that you're expected to know that today, of course, but it is important to be able to use these terms interchangeably. Because hybridization influences the shape, oftentimes these can be referred to by their hybridization. And if we look at the previous example, this is an sp2 hybridized carbon, one, two, three domains. And the HCH bond angle, as we discussed before, is 120 degrees. So the shape and the hybridization go together. As far as the practical of how do you count sigma and pi bonds, Sigma bonds are the only bond of a single bond and the first bond of a multiple bond. Pi bonds are the second bond, that should say, of a double bond, and the second and third bond of a triple bond. So here we have this chart. A single bond between x and x is one sigma and no pi. A double bond is one sigma and one pi, and a triple bond is one sigma and two pi. So in this case of HCl, we have one sigma bond and no pi bond because it's just a single. In this case of O double bond O, we have one sigma and one pi. Now, you can't say this is the sigma and this is the pi. It doesn't work that way. But if it's a double bond, it's one sigma bond and one pi bond. 
And if we have a triple bond, like in the case of n triple bonded to n, we have one sigma and two pi's. And that's basically how it works. So the fa final thing I want to do here is go over a few examples of counting sigma and pi bonds with these small organic molecules. I recommend that you first count the total number of bonds because they're all either sigma or pi. So by counting the total number of bonds, you'll make sure you found everything. So let's take a look. How many bonds do we have here? Just count all the lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six bonds. Notice that the double bond counts twice. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It counts as two. I don't know that it counts twice. Anyway, we, not, we need to identify six bonds as either, either sigma or pi because all bonds are either sigma or pi. So how many sigma do we have? Well, we have one, two, three, four. All the bonds to hydrogen are only single bonds, so they're all sigma. And one of the two bonds to carbon, between carbon and carbon, is a sigma. So we have one, two, three, four, five sigma. The double bond between the two carbons is a pi, so we have one pi. Always make sure five plus one is six. Um, if you count all the bonds first, it's a lot easier. It's easier not to make a mistake. Let's look at this example. So in this example, we have formaldehyde. We have one, two, three, four bonds. So four bonds. I'm not gonna do that every time. So we have four bonds, and we want to identify them as sigma or pi. This is a sigma. This is a sigma. This is one sigma and one pi. So we have one, two, three sigma bonds and one pi bond. This one, we have a lot of bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have a total of ten bonds. How many of them are sigma? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Did I count wrong? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I counted wrong. We have 11 bonds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bonds. How many of them are sigma? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have 9 sigma bonds. And how many of them are pi? 1, 2. The second bond of each of these double bonds is a pi bond, 2 pi. So we have a total of 11 bonds. Let's look at the next example. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bonds. How many of them are sigma? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 7 sigma and 1 pi. So this is how we can count sigma and pi bonds in an atom. Make sure that the total number of bonds adds up um, so that because all bonds are either sigma or pi, and make sure you don't count 11 as 10. I'm going to be careful, which I was not. So that is basically um, that. In the next section, we're going to look at combining these covalent bonding theories to see how everything basically stems off the Lewis structure. And once you have the Lewis structure, you can calculate many other things. So essentially, we're going to look at three examples where we draw the Lewis structure and we figure out all the things we've talked about in chapters uh, seven and eight that have to do with covalent bonding.